Hi, I'm Statis and this is Beatnik TV. This video is part two of how to start producing music. It's going to be a very general explanation into the process of music production. There's two main ways to produce music, either in a studio that has hardware or doing everything inside the computer, which is known as ITB or in the box. When I started producing music, I plugged my samplers and synths into a small mixing desk and both were connected by MIDI to my computer, which was an Amiga. You used the computer to sequence the instruments and mix their levels on a mixing desk before recording your music onto DAT tapes and mini disc. Now, you just do that whole same sequence, but with synthesizers and samplers that are inside the computer in your door. You use your door to write, produce and mix all your music and then record it out into a digital file like an MP3 or a WAV. It's so easy now to make a track and go and play it in a club that night. This process allows far higher sound quality and production speed. It's also very useful for getting feedback from crowds to see if the track works in a club, so you can go back to your studio and refine everything. The first thing you need to get is a door. There are loads of great choices like FL Studio and Pro Tools, but I mostly use Logic Pro. Now I'll give you the best music production tip ever right here and now. The real key to your music sounding professional is in your sample selection. Make sure to have a huge library of very high quality samples so you have the most tools to work with. To use samples, you just load them into your sampler and assign them to the corresponding key so they can be played back. Next, you want to have some good virtual synths so you can make sounds yourself and not be reliant on others' samples and sounds. These are plugins like Massive or Novation Bass Station. There's countless plugins out there and you'll find loads for free, but be warned, some of the best plugins can be very expensive. So once you've made your track using samples and synths, next, you need to use effects to make all the different musical parts sit together well and be mixed at the right volume level. After volume levels, the most important effect is EQ or an equaliser. The main idea behind EQ is to make parts of each sound quieter or louder when played alongside other sounds so that they don't clash. Next is compression. This helps make sounds more equal throughout their duration. In essence, flattening off the curve so they're punchier and easier to control in the mix. These processes help fit each sound clearly into the sonic spectrum. I find it helpful to imagine this in 2D as a wall, with the highest sounds at the top and the lowest down at the bottom. But now imagine that wall in 3D and you start to understand what panning and reverb do. You use these effects to position sounds into a 3D world so they clash even less and everything has a clear and defined position. This will make a better mix so your music translates better in all the different places and speakers it will be played on. Then on top of these main sets of effects, there are others that are more creative and used to create sounds. Things like delay, phase, flange, distortion, filters, and more. Many effects come pre-installed into your door to use, but you can also buy them from third-party stockists and use them inside your door too. You can use effects in any order to create a chain and putting them in different orders creates differing results. My standard chain would usually be EQ, Compression, Delay, delay reverb, reverb, EQ. I'll nearly always EQ at the start of the chain to get the sound ready for processing, and then EQ again at the end of the chain to carve out the right space for the sound in the sonic spectrum of the mix. The aim is to have everything laid out in its own space, top to bottom and left to right, and every element at the perfect volume. Then, once you record all this down into one file, you're ready to master your music with some final processing. The idea is to try and get your music to be as loud as possible to compete with other commercially released music in clubs and on radio, while still trying to keep it sounding as beautiful as possible. Pulling in either direction usually detracts from the other, so it's a continual battle of tiny nuance to make your music sound the best it can. Now, you have your record ready to go, so let's try and get it heard. <laughs> 